Hello, my name is Chris Murrow, and this is Honeybees on Native Plants. I thought I'd do a video because I've been amassing a uh, fair collection. Uh, m pretty much in the past two weeks, I've just been finding honeybees on uh, you know loads of native plants, and we're pretty much over the hump of uh, when it comes to native plants and native uh, sources for honeybees specifically to use. They tend to get distracted by trees in the uh, springtime, and they're pretty much finishing up their bloom. So now we're moving on to the uh, the uh, prairie plants, the ones, the uh, perennials that you find growing in full sun that tend to bloom and just fill the gap over the uh, over summer. Uh, only trees really left are maybe some sumacs and uh, yeah, some sumacs. That's pretty much all the uh, trees that are left there, and maybe a summer blooming magnolia. But here we have common milkweed, which is uh, pretty much as the name suggests. This is a weed. It's also a host plant to the monarch butterfly, which was just flying over there. And I tried to catch up to it or do more video, but they were they were too busy out in the field. It, it was too dense uh, here, and uh, I couldn't find any caterpillars. I guess we're still a little early for where I am in New Jersey for uh, for that to happen. But this is a weed. It is uh, not a garden-friendly uh, species, but there are other species that I'll get into of uh, Asclepius that are uh, more appropriate for your garden and such. But honeybees absolutely love uh, milkweeds. Uh, actually, pretty much every insect out there loves milkweed. <laughs> you know, it's, it has its own uh, own ecosystem around it whenever it flowers. And you can see here, there's uh, the flowers actually take on a uh, neat uh, color variation even within the same species. Uh, in just this field, I saw solid whites, I saw purples, I saw a uh, sort of a chestnut browny color kind of thing. And you see they do spread to form a colony. A single plant will just send up root suckers everywhere, or uh, you know, from a mother plant. And there were butterflies there too, but not as abundant as bees were. Bees, uh, beetles probably took second uh, stage. Uh, ants, of course, are always there stealing nectar, but I wasn't really focusing on them that day. So we have here um, uh, Asclepius, in, uh, sorry, Asclepius tuberosa, which is a uh, garden-friendly plant, and I have uh, in my garden a uh, cultivar called uh, Hello Yellow, which is... I'm not, I'm not sure why this is a cultivar, because really it's just a... Uh, it's just the pale version of the species that they're spreading. I believe it, what makes it a cultivar in the industry is the fact that they've been cloning this uh, particular plant. But, yeah, they, pick, they did a good pick, because honeybees love this one. Uh, when they're not drought stressed, you actually find uh, milkweeds covered in bees. So when you grow them in their proper conditions, they tend to they, they tend to um, do better at uh, attracting insects. Uh, this when I took this uh, video of uh, the uh, the true species, which tends to be this bright orange color, sometimes you find it with red stripes. Uh, sometimes the red stripes are so thick that the flower looks red, and I have I've seen quite a variety of uh, color variation inside this one species. But uh, here we are out uh, there. Everything's a little bit drought stressed, a little droopy, so I didn't get any uh, bees on here. You can see this one's slightly paler by comparison to the others. But you know they have these, you know, it's really uh, neat flowers to them. You know, it's and you don't really get that shade of uh, orange anywhere <laughs> with uh, too many flowers. And it's a very drought tolerant species. But one that isn't as drought tolerant is swamp milkweed, which you want to grow in uh, places where water tends to pool or you know off of a uh, rain gutter in a rain garden. They should really rename this fragrant milkweed, just because whenever the flowers are in the sun uh, for Asclepius incarnata, you can, you get this wonderful smell of um, of it's it's just, it's like cupcakes right out of the oven. It's it's a very generic dessert smell. And it's it's really they should they should bottle it they should they, should, they really need to do that because it's another one of those uh, little delights of the uh, garden that you just walk around and you find uh, around here. Now in years past I have had lots of honeybees on these plants, but uh, they don't seem to live lo much longer than maybe four or five years, or they just uh, maybe the location where those plants are particularly don't uh, survive as often as they uh, could in other spots, but. Yeah, anyway, it's a great plant to have, and those uh, last two are, you know, garden-friendly plants. They do spread around a little bit, but it's not something you can't get uh, get rid of. Another plant that spreads around is, this is Clustered Mountain Mint, which uh, is, you know, it's it's a mint f uh, plant, so you know honeybees love it. Uh, you know, in the, uh, the non-native world, I know uh, honeybee gardeners are always planting nepeta, or cat mint, 
uh, you know, most herbs, uh, basil and other things, uh, uh, lamb's ear, I know, uh, hun you know, honeybees will pretty much swarm to, and this is a mint plant, so it is a little bit aggressive, but this one in particular, it started out as a three-gallon pot, and it spread in every direction about three feet, sending up new, uh, little tubers and, uh, plants like that, but, um, I found that it's really easy to weed out, and, you know, it's, it's pretty much, because it's a mint plant, you can kind of get in the habit of just doing, uh, you know, it's, it's fun to weed because it smells like mint. You know, you just take a sprig of that, throw it in the car, or, you know, do something, uh, where, you know, just to let it, uh, dry out. And you can see, uh, it has these white petals on it that are, they're not really petals, they're just, uh, leaves to it. Uh, early sunflower was another one that I noticed, lots of bees on. Not honeybees this year. Perennial sunflowers, you need, they're, they're sort of hit or miss with honeybees. So you, have, you know, some years they are treasured, some years they're just ignored. But regardless, it's an early sh uh, shot of yellow, early burst of yellow, and and occasionally bees do go for it. Uh, lastly, I have here a button bush, which I had uh, planted, I think this this was like a three gallon pot last year, and uh, no, two years ago it was a three gallon pot. Uh, last year it flowered for the first time, but I only got like uh, four of these little disco ball flowers on it. This year it seems to be doing great, flowering uh, good. It's a, um, you know, it seemed to have a honeybee on every uh, cluster of flowers there. And it was weird how they dispersed themselves like that, because I'd rarely find more than one bee per, per uh, flower ball. <laughs> so that was uh, kind of neat. And whenever two would be on the same ball, one would be on one side and the other one would be on the other. So they, they, like, they dispersed themselves evenly. And that pretty much does it for this video. Uh, my name is Chris Murrow, and of course I have a blog, Ants, Bees, Butterflies, Nature, at blogspot.com. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.